Hi everybody, so in this video I'm going to show you how you can install your own local DAISY server playing on your local PC, or actually in this case I'm actually doing this on a um, Shadow Boost Cloud PC, but it all works the same, so that you can play single player DAISY on your local PC without having to connect to a community server or a public server or a private server or anything like that, or use the um, Daisy community offline mode, which you may well have seen a video that I did uh, about that previously. Daisy community offline mode is brilliant for quickly getting into Chernarus, Namalsk, um, Livonia, so you can have a look around, spawn things in, and generally explore. But if you want to have a, a genuine Daisy server experience, you need to run your own server locally. Also, this is a fantastic resource for server modders, whether that be uh, just simple XML mods like we would use for Xbox or PlayStation um, and or the more complicated Steam Workshop mods. And you can install these mods and play around with them and test them much more quickly than when you're trying to um, install mods on a remote server then having to restart the server and do all this sort of stuff because it works so much faster when you're locally. So let's get started. So what, we, what you want to do to start off with is fire up Steam and you want to go to your library and at the top where it says games you want to change that to tools and what you'll see is Daisy server because you'll already own this. So you want to it will say download the daisy server so download that well and it and it will install it won't it um and then once you've done that um you'll notice on, on your desktop there'll be a shortcut to, to launch the server but don't do that because it probably won't work what you want to do is if you just open up your file explorer um i mean in this case it's got two drives c and d i've installed it on the c drive so if you just go into your c drive and you just go and look for programs x86 then look for steam then look for steam apps then go into common this is where your steam stuff is so you can see a company of heroes daisy hell let loose iron harvest pubg and there we've got daisy server which is downloaded so if we let's just go and have a look at it so this is if you this is what you would see is if you were looking at the file structure on a remote server like an a nitrado server or something you would see you would see this however it is not complete yet we can't get started now a very kind chap corb pie or corby pie um, has done a really good guide to how you set one of these up and i'll put a link in the description below the video so you can read through what he's got to say as well However, he does miss out, or gloss over, I should say, a couple of points that are very important, especially when it comes to installing mods a little bit further down the line. So, let's get started. So we've got this, and you'll see very temptingly, Daisy server x 64 think, oh, I'll just double click on that, but stop, 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 stop. First, we need to create something called a batch file. Now, a batch file is a simple program that tells another program how to behave. So you may remember back back in the days of DOS, if you were around, where you would say run um, uh, doom. <laughs> okay, run doom.exe. Actually, you would just type doom.exe in it and it would run it. But then after doom, you could type things like doom.exe. And I'm probably going to get the syntax wrong, but you'd have something like slash easy or slash hard or slash lots of ammo so you were saying i want the doom game to start but i want to want it to start with these with these parameters and that's what a batch file does so it's very very powerful but we need one so if we then if we go back again to um called pie's site if you scroll down He's very kindly created a batch file for us, an example batch file. Now, it's not perfect. Remember that, it's not perfect. So what you want to do is you want to fire up your favorite text editor. I'd recommend you download the free Notepad++. Um, and get a new file open. And then what you want to do is you want to just copy everything from what he's done. So copy that. Copy into Notepad++. Just paste it in. And so these are the instructions we're going to use. Now, what you want to do first, if you just go File, Save As, 
and then find again the daisy um, server so local disk c in my case program files x86 steam steam apps common there is daisy server if we go into there and we'll just put this in inverted commas we'll put call it start.bat and that may, turns it into a batch file and what that will then do with notepad plus plus it will it will put things in colors so we can see things so what you can see is that you've got greens are comments and then you've got what it actually does don't worry too much what i found is the more you do this the more you kind of understand what's going on so if we look at the top first it says set server name set server name jim's daisy server well this isn't going to be jim's daisy server this is going to be the ssg test server track ssg local so scale speed of gaming local test server now set server location c now for myself we know that um i'm on c but if, if when you're in the daisy server folder if you click up here you'll get the absolute address of this particular um server so we can copy that say you'd install this on d or e or something like that you would copy that and you would paste that over the top of here like so and then there's stuff about the server port um, the server config file to look at now it says the server config file to look at is server dz dot C, um, cfg now if we go into our look at our server file you'll see we haven't got that yet so that's another file we're going to create in just a minute the con config file again sets a load of parameters that, that tells the server how to behave and if we scroll down scroll down scroll down scroll down and then we have um, start and th this is the this is the bit that does all the, the work that's telling it to start the daisy server use the config string from up here so server dz config so it's saying use that thing there use the port use the cpu count use the logs and stuff like that now what's very interesting about this line is he actually misses something out that's very important well, he misses two things out actually. <laughs> um, he misses out profiles. And what you want to do is you want to add in this profiles equals config here. So I'm going to copy that. And you can just type this in. So you can just put it in uh, anywhere on this line. You may want to make this video go full screen so you can actually see what's going on. So you see, I've just added to the line that says start. I've put inverted commas dash profiles equals config. And what that does is when the server starts up, it's going to create another folder called config. And within that folder, it's then going to um, uh, put things like the log files in. And very importantly, when you come to add other mods, which I'll be doing other videos about, um, say community framework, um, community online tools, uh, Zombri admin tools, that sort of stuff, that's very important um, because that's where you put the bit that says hi my steam ID is this please recognize me as an admin and that's where it looks and that's how it creates that folder to dump all that stuff in I will be doing other videos about um, adding mods but in case I'll, I'll show you a bit now so if you want to add mods you do something like that so you see I put uh, inverted commas dash mod equals at cf um, semicolon at zombie admin tools semicolon at unlimited dash stamina uh, semicolon at winter churnerous so that's how you would add mods in but that, that's for another video all we really want to do for the moment is just get this server fired up um, so you can get 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 playing so now we've done that let's just save that now I've kind of mentioned the fact that we also need a server dz.config file so in notepad plus if we go file new and again i'll put a link to this down below daisy uh daisy's developer bohemia interactive have got um, a really nice page on server configurations and what we're going to do um is we're just going to copy all of this again i'll put a link in the description down below copy all of this like that Go back to Notepad++ and we're just going to paste it in. Now, 
If you do read this page, you'll see underneath there's additional parameters that you can paste in as well. However, they do stop it working. So there's something in here that, that does stop this working locally. Um, I haven't figured it out yet, but to get the server started and you, you can do all your modding and all that sort of stuff on it, you only need the top. Now, if we go back to Notepad++, we can see at the top host name, example name. So let's put in, so it's SSG, what do we call it again? I'm trying to remember now, SSG local test server. Like so. We don't want a password, we don't want to be admin, we don't want to enable the whitelist, maximum player 60, well there's only going to be me, verify a signature, all this sort of stuff. Now the thing you probably want to change is the system time down here. And if you scroll, these are all um, by uh, to the right of the slashes, these are all remarks, so, you, so these are all telling you what to do. And over here it tells you this is the format that you should put the system time in. So if we just copy that, scroll back over here. Scroll that into there, and we can say system time. What, what do you reckon? Um, we'll start in the year 2000, um, 07, so it's July, uh, the 1st of July, 01, and we'll start at 11 in the morning, um, and then We make sure that server time persistent is zero. So there we go. So that means that whenever the server starts, it's always going to be daytime when we start that way. So this now we need to save as, if we remember, we need to save this as um, serverdz.config. So if we copy that, so we go file, save as. Make sure we're in the daisy server file. So let's just go up and just check. Daisy server, there it is. And let's put an inverted comma. Or quotation marks so it saves it as that so what we can do now is if we just just double check that so if we look in in the file now we can see we've got server dz.config and we've got start so that's what we're going to start now before we go on before we actually do get started you're probably starting to get an idea of how powerful this can be how powerful the batch file can be because you know like when we looked at this batch file that's got all these different mods in Obviously, in order to start up your server, your local server, in different states, you can just have different batch files. So you could have um, winter churnerous batch file. You could have um, expansion batch file. You could have base building plus batch file. So that you just start different batch files. And then from within the same server here, that would then start those, those different mods. Um, and that enabling you to very quickly test and play around with different things. So the proof is in the pudding. So let's double click on the start button. This fires up. You get this little window. And then what you should be able to see here is this is the console that starts firing on. This is this is really interesting actually. This is the um, the matrix readout of your server as it's doing stuff. So this is what's going on in the background of it spawning things in. And once it's been going a while, you'll see it's, it's, it's doing different stuff. And you'll see the time it takes to do stuff as well is quite interesting. You see it's starting to spawn storm bits in now, which is really cool. So let's just minimize that so it's out of the way. And now what we can do is just minimize all this, minimize that. If we fire up the daisy launcher now like this, oh, just whacked my microphone, that probably came through. So now we're in the Daisy launcher. Just quickly check the mods. Now we haven't added any mods to this server, so we don't load any. No, I haven't loaded anybody. I haven't loaded any in. If we go to servers though, and go to LAN, so local area network SSG, local test server. That's our local test server. So we just click on join, set up DLCs and mods and join. Well, there aren't any, so we just click. And then we just wait. One of the things I do suggest you play around with, and you'll probably be aware of this by now, is if you go into your XML files um, and go into, I think, is it in um, the DB? Is it DB? The, the, anyway, the globals.xml file. Find that one and change the um, like login time to like two seconds. You can change the log out to five seconds, but it doesn't make any difference. You can change the login so that when, when you're doing this sort of stuff, because 
the main reason I do this with you know installing local servers is to try out different mods to see how they work before you put them on your on your public servers. In fact, I need to quickly just adjust this to go to full screen mode, otherwise it won't work. Loading in. It's setting everything up, it's firing up. And although you might say, well, this is taking quite a while, trust me, if you do this online, where you're trying to upload files to a server and then reset the server, get the server to restart, um, literally to restart these servers, it's just a click of the mouse, you know, to, to turn off those two things, and then we can start up again. And here we are in our DayZ server on our local PC. How cool is that? So let me just quickly exit out of that. And what you should be able to see is if we quit out of day Z, if we now go back to the folder, you'll see the config file has, has this config um, uh, folder has appeared and within it, all these settings have appeared. And that is super important that because but when we start working with um, Zombri admin or community online tools, this is where you put your your the, the files that say, look, this is my Steam ID, make me an admin. Right, so there we go. Hopefully, that's been useful. Hopefully, now you can see how easy it is to install a, P, a uh, local server on your local PC for you to play single player DayZ, obviously, because when you log out, it remembers where you are but also in order to test things and test mods and really, really uh, change things very, very quickly without having to work with a remote server. Now, you can obviously open up a local server for other people to connect to. I wouldn't recommend that. Probably, because It's probably against the terms and conditions of your internet server provider anyway, but also it would have to hog most of your internet connections as people are coming and going. This is really something to play single player and to test mods locally. Right, hopefully that's been useful, if it has been hit the like button. If you've got any other questions, put them in the comment section down below. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again soon.